Hello, future millionaires. Thanks for joining us today again on the Get Rich Slow podcast. Today, we're joined by Ashley Whaley. And of course, I have my uh, regular co-host, Rob Delavan, with us from Delavan Realty. How are you guys doing today? Hey, guys. How's it going? Hey, good afternoon. Thanks for joining us today, Ashley. Yeah, (laughs) thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. So Ashley is the owner of More Free Time Cleaning, um, the premier uh, cleaning company in the Portland metro area. And yes. she, we've known each other for what, six to seven years, professionally, personally, and you've been a huge inspiration for me. Um, I can't say enough great things about you and your business and your business mind and growing a business from zero to incredible in a <laughs> relatively short amount of time. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I know we met, I always base how long I know somebody on the age of my children. Ah, <laughs> uh, there you go. <laughs> And so Macy is seven. She's going to be eight. So I want to say we've known each other for like seven, eight years. Yes, that's about Uh right. Yes. And, and I will say um, the audience across the universe will know, I'm pretty sure my seven-year-old son, Russell has a little bit of crush on Macy. (laughs) So he's always said perked up a little bit when it's what Macy's coming over. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's so sweet. Love yeah, it. So that's adorable. Russell's a cutie. Oh yeah. They, they, uh, they have a good time. Um, so we're going to go through, uh, just a few questions for you, get to know you a little better. Um, and hopefully you can drop some of your wisdom on us. So yeah. starting out, um, please just tell our audience, why did you get into your field and what is the main driver that just improves your continuously improving your craft? And you're amazing at that. Yeah. So I started my first cleaning company in Minnesota when I was 19 years old. And I literally was working downtown Minneapolis and I was at a call center and I just, it was a Saturday, like a beautiful Saturday sun or summer afternoon. And I was just like, I cannot make one more call. Like I can't, (laughs) I can't do this. (laughs) And so like I shut down my computer and turned in my headset to my manager. And I was like, I'm so sorry, but I'm out of here. Like I got to (laughs) go. And I'd always had this love for cleaning and I'd always just had an entrepreneurial spirit. I don't even really know where it came from. Maybe from my grandpa. My grandpa was kind of a entrepreneurial kind of a guy, but um, I just honestly saw the potential for working for yourself versus working for somebody else, just the freedom that came with it um, from a timing, you know, scheduling standpoint. And then also from a financial standpoint, I just was like, you know, I could charge this amount and then I could work for myself or I could go and get, you know, X amount of dollar an hour job. And the two of them were just not matching up. And so I just saw tons of flexibility and more freedom within time and resources at such a young age to get into business for myself. But then fast forward to where we're at now, you know, 15 years down the road and that little cleaning idea has turned into um, one of the top rated cleaning companies in the Portland Metro. And so there's a lot of story in between, you know, 15 years is a long time, but um, you know, that's really what I saw was just flexibility and freedom. And now what I see is just number one impact. I mean, we've got the best team in my opinion, um, where we're actually able to sew in to our team and add value to their life and provide them with a great working environment. Um, we pay our, our team very well. Um, and we just, you know, we're more than just a cleaning company, in my opinion, again. Um, we really just, we take to heart who we bring on and we really want to add to them, whether they, you know, we don't intend, intend for them to stay with us forever. Um, but we hope that once, you know, they do find something else that they have learned and grown along the way, along with honing in on their cleaning skill. <laughs> too, <right? laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's interesting. Um, it was a few years ago. I don't know if I ever even told you this story, but one of your cleaners was in my house and I had not gone to the bank like I was supposed to. And I had some cash. It was like an envelope of cash with hundred dollar bills in my office. And it was just sitting there and I didn't even think about it. And you know, it's in my house, it's in my office. Well, you guys were in there and one of your cleaners was like, you know, you might like, they brought it up to me, like just (laughs) 
yeah. you know, you might <laughs> not want to let that sit around. Don't and, live a pile. I mean, of it's bills. one of those things. <laughs> what do people? What are people most afraid of when it comes to, um, you know, uh, somebody who's cleaning your home? Come in, come yeah. in, is yep. to see those things and have an opportunity for you know, uh, the the little bad devil on the shoulder to you know make them do something right. Totally. And your person, and and I totally should tell you her name. I'm sure she's. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know where she was, where she is now, but she obviously got that. And yeah. there, I, I can't say enough about that culture yeah. that you created there. So that's totally. incredible. And to do it in your industry that I don't think normally focuses on culture and core values, yeah. that's pretty amazing. Yeah, um, core values have been everything. And that was a major thing that we did at the beginning of 2020 was we really took the time to identify what our core values were as a company and they are have fun, be honest, find solutions and be respectful. And so that be honest one really ties into what you're just talking about because when you're in somebody's home, it's such an intimate thing. And so you want to yeah. have that, that integrity, that honesty, not just with your team and, you know, employer, employee, but also with employee cleaning company that you're hiring, team member that's in your home, client's home, like there's so many right. different interpersonal connections there. So honesty is 100% so important. Right. And it's, it's just huge knowing, you know, having that trust factor. Um, that kind of leads to my second question for you is how do your services better set up a person to build wealth? Yeah, so that's a really good question. And that kind of goes back again to something that we changed up in 2020 was we really, um, we rebranded our company. So the name of our company is More Free Time Cleaning, which really touches on the client's number one pain point. The number one reason why somebody hires a cleaning company is because they want more time in their schedule to do the things that they love whether that's going on adventures because the Pacific Northwest is full of adventure <laughs> or it's spending quality time with their family, spending quality time with, with their spouse. And what that looks like, especially for people who utilize our service, is they realize that their time is worth more than what they're actually spending on utilizing a cleaning service. And so mm -hmm. I think people who are building wealth or who recognize the importance of building wealth, they realize that they can delegate tasks to somebody else who is going to be more efficient at them. And so, for example, most people, when they clean their own house, especially depending on like how much traffic they have going on in their house, whether there's, you know, 10 kids and four dogs or, you right. know, two kids and one cat, whatever it might be, um, they're typically spending an entire Saturday cleaning the house. And honestly, it typically falls on the mom or the woman of the house. Like, let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. um, and that can add stress. It can add more chaos, especially if it's a, you know, if, if everybody's working um, and what ends up happening is that, okay, that whole Saturday is now gone. And then what Sunday's left. And then it's like back to the grind on Monday. Mm -hmm. And so when you utilize a service, basically our team can come in, get the job done, and then get out and that you've got a nice clean home versus you spending all day cleaning. And then what ends up happening too, like when people are cleaning their own home is they're organizing or they're feeding the kids or they're taking the dog on a walk or they're doing their laundry. And then, you know, it's, it, it ends up becoming more than, than cleaning, but it feels like you've been cleaning all, all day. day. Right. Sure. If you've got kids, you can't really just clean for two hours, can you? Yeah, you can't exactly. just go, oh, if you guys take care of yourselves, we'll be fine. I'm going to go and step away from everything. <laughs> yes. Right. Correct. Which, so <laughs> what you're touching on is this concept. Adrian and I have talked about this quite a bit uh, over the years is if you delegate that task, mm -hmm. you should, let's say it saves you 10 hours a month, right? What's cool about, and that freedom, and it's in your business name, but that freedom is take five of those hours and dedicate them non-guilty, right? To just, I mean, if, if that means you add to your, you know, Marvel Avengers movie watching binge, right? 17 movies yeah. or 20, yeah. whatever it is, like enjoy, right? Yeah. 
And then the other five hours, put it towards something productive. And the concept there is you're going to be so much more recharged during that other five hours. And here, and here's the, the benefit of this. And it doesn't matter what you're delegating, whether it be, um, you know, Adrian, like, you know, we've talked to bookkeepers, you know, cleaning, um, we have, sure. uh, you know, how many more examples of areas in life, you know, people that clean their own roofs and gutters and things like that, that they're spending time or, you know, and, uh, accounting and finance and, and so on at the end of the day is you're not as good as the professional at that task. Right. Yeah, so exactly. do what you're really, really good at and you're passionate about and then delegate the rest and your bandwidth is going to blow up. And yeah. Then, I think my uh, wife would agree with you. I'm definitely not <laughs> <laughs> to that snuff. That's, but it, it's incredible how that works. And that is a wealth building tool is wealthy people do, they hire people to do things. And yeah. now they don't hire people because they're lazy. They hire people because they're so much better at what they do. Um, yeah. And, yeah. and, and so forth. Um, in your world, and this is a question I've kind of been looking forward to, uh, in your world, how can a, just a lay person, our audience figure out whether their house cleaner is truly top of their field. And do you have examples of this? And Adrian and I have always said this, the, the example piece from where we're coming from is the top, uh, 20% of people in our profession generally make 80% of the income. Yep. Yeah. So they do the vast majority of the transactions. So there's a lot of people. So that's how we couch that question, but every industry is different. So what, how does yours lay out and what do you different, what do you do differently? And how does person know that they're getting a Ashley and more free time cleaning and versus, I don't know, I don't want to get sued, but Mary Mates, right? <laughs> yeah, no, and that's a really great question. And that's honestly, probably one of the harder questions for me to answer because I don't like quote unquote, like bashing other companies or that's okay. Saying, Let us you know, do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we're the best Let's get a list because together. of this. But <laughs> what I, I think what really sets us apart and probably our number one competitor is like that single gal who's just out there hustling, trying to get mm -hmm. by kind of like what I was in the very beginning of my cleaning company career, if that's what you want to call it. Sure. And a lot of times people will go with that, you know, single gal, single guy who's just a one man show who probably isn't insured, isn't, you know, bonded, doesn't have all the right tools, doesn't um, have a team where if they're out, they can't, you know, call somebody else in. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that's, that probably ends up being our biggest competitor versus like another big name brand. Sure. And what we really okay. like to just talk with that individual who might already have a cleaning person, but they're looking to work with more of like a company versus just mm -hmm. like a one man show. What I can really do is speak on experience and say, you know what, I've been there. Like I've been that, that one man show. And I know what that, that cleaner is going through. And in our experience, what we found is that when we actually operate full on as a professional business, that is truly what sets us apart. So mm -hmm. going back to core values, we run and operate our entire business on our core values. I'll say them again, have fun, which who doesn't want to work with a company that loves to have fun? Like our team literally shows up with joy and they're excited to be there and they're excited to clean versus like, oh man, I got to clean your house again today. Three you more know? houses to go <laughs> to, you know, like, yeah. Yes. Okay. I yeah. So we, we show up with joy. We're excited to be there. We're, we're going to have fun. We are honest. Like we just talked about, we're honest from, you know, the time you give us a call to the time where you get to your house to clean. And we run that core value through our, you know, through our hiring system, through bringing on clients, through everything that we do, finding solutions. There's been, I actually just put together a podcast today on this third core, third core value, find solutions. Um, I love working with people who are solution seekers who can figure mm. it out. <laughs> right. And that is something that we not only as business owners do, but we instill that in our team. Mm. And we, um, when we're hiring people, we ask that question, you know, can you give me an example of how you have had to find a solution to a problem, whether it's small, whether it's big, but there's things that come up in our industry all day, every day where it's like, oh gosh, the dog 
is barking and he won't stop. Like, what, what can I do? Or, right. oh, I'm locked out of a house or, oh, I don't know how to lock up a house or, you know, whatever that might be. And it's like, okay, we're going to find a solution. Like yeah. the last, the last solution to our problem should be putting our problem onto the homeowner. Like we're going to do whatever we can to, right. to figure it out. And then um, being respectful, being respectful is so key in anything that you're doing, but we really pride ourselves in keeping a great attitude and being respectful, not just to ourselves as uh, business owners, my husband and I, me and Avery, like we're incredibly respectful to one another. We're respectful to our, our team, our staff. I mean, our team is everything to us and we really mm-hmm. do our very best to let them know how much we appreciate them. And then same to our, our client. And so we love working with people who are truly grateful and who are excited to have us there where it's not. And we've worked with, with people in the past who haven't been super respectful and they treat their cleaning company like, oh, you're just the cleaning lady or, oh, right. here you sure. go, you know, clean my house. You know, we've worked with people that are like that. And we're, we do, we try to do a good job of kind of weeding those, those people out. Um, so we, we utilize that on, on all aspects of, mm-hmm. um, what we're doing. But, um, I really think like the core values are a huge thing that set us apart. And we, you know, like I said before too, we're, we pay our team incredibly well. Um, we've got, you know, top notch supplies that we use, mm-hmm. um, and we've got systems. So everything that we do has a system in place. And that was one of the huge silver linings of 2020 was <laughs> we had plenty of time to figure right, out what we wanted, right, like sure. what we Step had back. to do to, to put good quality systems in place. So um, there's a system from the time somebody inquires about a cleaning till the house gets cleaned and you're onto the, you know, your next scheduled cleaning. So we're very oh. systemized when it comes to things too. I That's would really venture cool. to say that the, the one person shop probably does almost none of that. Um, yeah. How can you systemize? Yeah. They're really probably, effectively. exactly. And they're also, I'm sure exhausted. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been there. I've been there where like I've cleaned five houses in a day oh. and it is, you just don't have time to do any of the back end stuff. It's cause you are, you're tired. It's hard. It's hard work. And like, even we have a, we have a system for our rags. So we have a, a company that comes and gets our rags washes them, dries them, folds them, delivers them. Wow. Like that was something we incorporated last year where we should have done that, you know, 10 years ago, but it's the, like the, the little details of things that just make a world of difference where we're very much so a turnkey company now. I mean, there's, there's always things to improve, but that's, our focus right now sure. is culture improvement is constant. And systems. Yeah, that's right. great. We, I think we've heard this mirrored a few times too, Rob, uh, this concept of like, as you, I think it's great that you've, you've built it out this way, but you know, as you stop being just you and you've got to multiply, multiply your efforts and your standards, you start to actually make a conscious decision about each of those standards rather than just, you know, you're obviously passionate about what you do and you hold yourself to a high standard but actually putting those things into writing and putting them into practice and, and mm-hmm. teaching the people that work for you, those things turns it into, um, you know, I, I get core values is it's, it's a little bit overused of a term, but I love that you use it. Cause it's, it's absolutely valid here. It's not just a corporate buzzword. It's really thinking about what are the most important things to my business. Um, and it's, it's fascinating to me. You didn't sit here and tell us, you know, it's all about a squeaky clean finish or it's about the mm. shine on the floor. What you're talking about is all interpersonal stuff. And those are the, those are really the, the, the things upon which the floor is going to be sparkling clean because people are happy. They're not going to steal because they're taken care of. Um, you know, uh, hopefully, yeah. uh, you know, there's, there's, th- this sort of stuff builds on itself and, and creates the result that you want organically rather than saying this is exactly what you have to do at every house well and what's fascinating is i mean in essence the core values and asking those questions as you know is this fun is this respectful um are am i solving problems uh and i'm missing the fourth one but being honest uh being honest right but by asking all of those questions you're fun and creating that as a culture um you're then attracting the people that yeah. are going to build wealth for you and frankly for themselves. Um, yeah. You'd never think that 
somebody who's a professional cleaner is going to maybe merge into something else. But I mean, look at you, right? Yeah, so totally. it's, it's just, it's, it's that concept of culture first and then everything else second. And there's a million books about that, but you know, at the end of the day, when's the last time you talked to a cleaning company who actually focuses on culture and not, you know, it, yeah. like you said, Adrian, they're not worried about the sparkling polish of the floor. That's just baseline, right? right. Anybody can do that. So yeah. um, what industry hacks can you lay on the audience? Like for, yeah, I doubt my wife ever will listen to my podcast because it's me. <laughs> oh but... yes, she will. She will. Lydia's the best. <laughs> oh man. But anyway, uh, what what are just some simple things that the lay person can do maybe before even bringing on a professional cleaner? Yeah. So I love that question because again, going back to adding value, I think, you know, for somebody who really does truly care about keeping a clean home and maybe cleaning just isn't in their budget right now, maybe it's something that it's a goal they want to achieve. They're going to really, you know, hustle this year and make, mm -hmm. make it a goal for 2022. There's some things that, the homeowner, the, you know, whether you're renting, you don't have to be a homeowner, wherever you're at, um, can take upon themselves to actually get a hold of their quote unquote chores. And so what I encourage people to do is to figure out a schedule that's going to work for them. Mm -hmm. And so this is that, this is what I do personally. Um, so I clean, cleaning happens on Mondays and it happens weekly. And when you can have somebody come in and clean for you on a weekly basis, oh my gosh, it is oh, absolutely awesome. amazing. It is like, um, incredible. I was talking to Kathy Winslow and yes. she's, we were talking about cleaning and she used the word deluxe. And I was like, yes, it is like deluxe. When you can have your house clean on a weekly basis, it's deluxe. But if you're not there yet, you can certainly put cleaning on your schedule for you to do that yourself once a week. And right. once you get it dialed in, it doesn't take very long. So what that looks like is you're cleaning your kitchen, you're cleaning your bathrooms, you're dusting, and you're doing your floors. And right. I would encourage getting a vacuum that goes from hard surface to a carpet that's easy. I utilize a Dyson animal theater, something like that. It's a cordless Dyson and it works mm absolutely amazing but so I clean on Mondays um figure out what what day is going to work best for you maybe that's a Saturday if that's when you have more time in your day um and then I have a, a laundry schedule so I do laundry on Tuesdays Thursdays and Saturdays and then I do my bedding on Sundays and then I'll typically do like an organizing project on a Wednesday and that's really how I keep things in line in task and it doesn't get overwhelming because those are things that are never ending. I mean, dishes and laundry, those things are, ha they're always accumulating. And then at the end of the day, I put my house back in order. So we have two kids, we have a seven-year-old and a four-year-old. And when they're home all day, like the house just becomes crazy and chaotic, <laughs> mm -hmm, yes. but I know that like, okay, it's, at least I know it's clean. Number one, cause I cleaned on Monday. And then right. number two, after they go to bed, I put the house back in order and, and restore the peace. And right. so everything has a place. It's nice and tidy. Um, and then I always get the coffee pot ready the night before. Nice. So that way when the morning comes, I'm like, okay, it's on. And we have an espresso, but we had to like acquire an espresso budget. And so <laughs> <laughs> it got a little crazy. So we're like, okay, that's like another little hack of like, you want to save time, get the coffee pot ready the night before. And that way you're not uh, like you super go. loud and waking up all the kids. But um and there's, I've got a podcast too, in regards to like systems and how to, you know, really dive deeper into those concepts, yes. but it all just boils down to figuring out what's going to work for you and for your household. And then right. just sticking to the plan. Yes. And, and then it does become overwhelming. It sounds like you could do, actually, I know you could do a entire podcast just on scheduling. Yeah. I have a podcast out there on like how to keep yeah. your house on a schedule. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, will you share the name for our audience? Will you share the name of your podcast and, and the details there? Yeah. Where can yeah. we listen to you? Yeah. So it's the more free time Portland podcast and we are on all podcast platforms. Awesome. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. Yeah, so and where can they find your business? 
Yeah. So you can find our business on Instagram. So we, that's probably the the place that we're most, uh, that we utilize the most. So our, um, our handle is at more free time cleaning. And then our website is more free time cleaning.com. And that's got all of our information on there. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Well, there's, uh, <laughs> There's, there's only about five more podcasts that we could do, Ashley. So everybody wait. No, never mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being on this one. Um, this yeah, is, this thank is you. incredible. Uh, there's, it's, it's so transcends. It's so cool that cleaning, which is so simple, um, becomes a business that you can grow and scale and create. And um, it's at a level that, uh, frankly, I, I, would, I would expect anyone in your industry and frankly, anyone in indus- any industry for small business would uh, love to uh, achieve the the progress that you've you've achieved. So I love that. Thank um, you. Thank you so much for being on. Uh, yes. Thank you for sharing your wisdom. Yes. Yes. Thank you <laughs> guys it. so much for having me. I'm super pumped for you guys. You guys are doing huge things, and I just cannot wait to to see what else is to come. 2021 20, is your guys' 2021. Year? Yes. Exactly. Break it out. <laughs> All right. All right. Future slow millionaires. Uh, thank you for your time today. <laughs> yes. Okay.